In this video, we're going to be discussing whether you should let your diesel engine cool down before shutting it off, and also we have a destruction of the week. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Depth Tape Channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing should you let a diesel cool down before shutting it off? Now, the first time I was asked this question was after I made my should you let your diesel engine warm up video, and this question is kind of the inverse to that question, since this is discussing right before the engine shuts down, and the other video is discussing right when the engine starts up. And a short answer to this question is, yes, if the engine was run under a heavy load, you should let it cool down before shutting it off. But the point of this video is not to answer the question quickly, but to go into depth and discuss why that is. Now, the first thing that may come to your mind is, well, how does running an engine cool it down in the first place? Isn't an engine generating heat whenever it's running, even at a low idle? And the answer to that is yes. The point of cooling down the engine is not to get it to be the same as the ambient air temperature outside. The point of cooling down the engine is to get your exhaust gas temperatures, your engine coolant temperature, and your engine oil temperatures down to a base level by idling the engine, not to get them to match ambient air temperature. That's never gonna happen while the engine is idling. Basically, when an engine is running under a heavy load, it disproportionately affects three systems in your engine, those being the exhaust system, the cooling system, and the engine oil system. Now, we're gonna be discussing each one of those systems in detail and explaining why you don't wanna shut down an engine while it's still hot without cooling it down first, okay? Let's get into it. Now, I first decided to make this video. I said to myself, you know, I need to do some research on this subject. I mean, when you think about it, it makes sense to let it cool down, but I figured, let's see what if Caterpillar has anything to say about cooling it, an engine down before shutting it down. I'd never read anything on that before. I've only heard basically hearsay and what other older mechanics have told me. So I typed in our new Sys 2.0 system and found this from Caterpillar. This was titled Engine Shutdown. It says, notice that, now this is the beginning of the article. Notice stopping the engine immediately after it has been working under load can result in overheating and accelerated wear of the engine components. If the engine has been operating at high RPM and or high loads, run at low idle for at least three minutes to reduce and stabilize internal engine temperature before stopping the engine. Avoid hot engine shutdowns will maximize turbocharger shaft and bearing life if you go into the severe operating conditions section there's a whole bunch this is just a section of them but let's look at the bottom couple ones so starting at the extended operation at low idle that's a severe operating condition frequent cold starts below 32 degrees fahrenheit frequent dry starts meaning starting after 72 hours of shutdown and frequent hot shutdowns in parentheses, shutting down the engine without the minimum of two to five minutes of cooldown time. Now, if Caterpillar obviously tells you that you should cool down the engine, and they are one of the largest diesel engine manufacturers, even if not in the truck sector anymore, but largest diesel engine manufacturers in the world, that you should always cool down the engine before shutting down, it's probably a good idea. Also, there's a lot of articles online about the importance of shutting it down. And now we're going to discuss it system by system and we're going to be starting with the exhaust system because that is disproportionately affected the most by hot shutdowns so while the engine's running whether at idle or under a loaded condition meaning you know you got a lot of boost we got a lot of cylinder pressures we're moving a load typically it is generating a lot of heat and the higher the load the more heat is being generated now most of that heat is getting going into a couple places most a lot of it's going out the exhaust system some's being absorbed by the engine cooling system and then some of the energy is getting absorbed and actually used for propelling the vehicle or doing work but a large percentage of it is going out your exhaust system that's why your exhaust pipe is pretty much always the hottest spot on the engine why is it so bad for the exhaust system to shut down the engine while it's hot well there's a lot of reasons but we'll start with the most important one and that is your turbocharger see the turbocharger is a very precision machine it can spin up to even in excess of a hundred thousand rpms not only that 
it doesn't really have seals or bearings similar to the engine in that it doesn't have like a front crankshaft seal. The seals and bearings on there are critical and only work with clean engine oil being supplied to them all the time. And what happens is if you shut down your turbocharger when it's under a load or it's very hot, we'll say it's a thousand degrees, there is engine oil on the bearing and on the shaft seal in that turbocharger cartridge that is then going to be subjected to the hot exhaust gas temperature. And what's going to happen then is that oil is actually going to burn off and leave deposits behind. And you don't want that on a turbocharger. Remember, this thing spins very, you know, tens and tens of thousands of RPM. You don't want oil deposits getting left on your turbocharger because you shut it off while it was too hot. That is one of the primary reasons for that. And what are some of the other reasons? Well, of course, metals expand and contract as they heat up or cool down. And you don't want them to have hot spots or else that can cause warping of the exhaust manifold and cause cracking in your flanges or basically anywhere there's metal components, which is all of the exhaust system. It can cause the valves to overheat. It can cause damage pretty much anywhere where it's going to be very hot. Remember, the engine is a dynamic system while it's operating, meaning there's always airflow through the engine in the intake and exhaust side while it's operating. There's always coolant flow throughout the engine, and there's always oil being pumped throughout the engine as long as it's turning. When you shut it off, all those systems stop. All the airflow stops through the engine, all the coolant flow stops, and all of the engine oil stops. So if you shut it off, it's going to stop getting oil to that turbocharger, which is a bad thing. Speaking of turbochargers, how about a destruction of the week? So this week's destruction of the week is this C15 turbocharger. Look at the fins on the compressor side there. Now, if you notice, this little air funnel actually broke all the welds, and that's what took out the turbocharger here. Now, unfortunately, this customer only came in for an overhead adjustment until we found this which made him reply like this. <laughs> okay, so we discussed the exhaust system there. What about the engine cooling system? Well, the engine cooling system relies on a mixture of a coolant, which is typically an ethylene or propylene glycol mix and water, and its purpose is to flow throughout the engine and to pull heat from the engine and then push it into the radiator, which then helps draw that heat energy out of the cooling system. When you shut the engine off, it stops flowing. Now, not the entire engine is not one uniform temperature. You have to remember that the cylinders where all the combustion is happening get a lot hotter than, let's say, the camshaft that's not exposed to combustion. And the cooling system needs to pull that heat away from the cylinders. Well, that's great as long as the engine's running, but when you shut it off, and let's say our coolant temperature is already hot, it's 220 degrees, and water boils at 212 degrees, when you shut it off, you could get hot spots in the system, which of course can cause some boiling. Now the system is pressurized and having a mix of ethylene glycol and water does raise the boiling point, but those hot spots and causing small amounts of boiling can help, which is a bad thing, push air pockets into your cooling system. And this can cause a couple things. It can cause boil over, which means you'll lose some coolant out of the pressurized cap. And it can cause something called cavitation, which cavitation is where those air pockets are formed around a boiling fluid or liquid. It'll actually eat away at the metal surfaces, whether it's aluminum or steel or cast iron. And that's bad. Over time, it can actually damage critical engine components like liners, cylinder blocks, water pumps, pretty much anything exposed to the cooling system. So always let the cooling system cool down most critical thing in the engine is your engine lubrication system the oil now oil is used to help cool the engine down as well as well as the cooling system but oil is kind of secondary it's there for lubrication and just like the coolant the oil is exposed to different parts of the engine that are at different temperatures i already mentioned the turbocharger which is probably the hottest component that oil is uh, in contact with but it's also in contact with the cylinder walls the piston, the connecting rods, which are exposed to the combustion process, and those can get really, really hot as well. If those are still really, really hot and there's oil on them, it can cause the oil to basically burn and leave behind deposits, 
which can get in the pistons, on the sides of the cylinder walls, in your piston rings, places you do not want. The oil should be allowed to cool down as well. Now with the oil, I'm also gonna mention the fuel, and people don't think of fuel as cooling the engine because it's used to power the engine, but many engines have a fuel rail that runs through the cylinder head, and it helps keep the injectors cool by running fuel around them. Cooling down the engine will also help cool down the fuel, which is used as a slight coolant to the injectors, so that's another good reason to let the engine cool down, is it'll actually help cool down the fuel a little bit before you shut it off. Now, discuss all these reasons why you should let it cool down, but what should you let it cool down to, temperature-wise? Well, all engines kind of have a base exhaust gas temperature, coolant temperature, and engine oil temperature when they're just idling at operating conditions. So once the engine's warmed up, typically your the point at which your engine cooling system closes the thermostat can be anywhere from 180 to maybe 200 degrees. That's kind of the base minimum coolant temperature that engine's going to operate at. Everything above that is going to be with the thermostats open. That should be around where you're looking for coolant temperature-wise, where the thermostats close at. Engine oil temperature... Those can vary, but if your coolant temperature is dropping, your oil temperature is going to be dropping as well. You typically want that to be less than 230 degrees before you shut the engine off at an idle, which it should be if the engine's not running loaded. And of course, the exhaust gas temperature is the most critical. Those can get really high under a load. They can get well over 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 degrees even. But at idle, they're typically going to be much lower. You know, and it varies by engine, but let's say it's going to be between three and 500 degrees. That varies, of course, a little bit. If you have an exhaust gas temperature sensor or a pyrometer, as they're also called, you can see what's normal for your engine at idling. Wait for that to get close to what it should be at idle before shutting it off. While doing all those, it should extend the life of basically all the systems in your engine. I hope this video has been a little informative for you. Thanks for watching.